Now, we all know that Botox is great for wrinkles, but how do you know when you can use it for something else? Well, Alicia in Joshua Tree, California writes, Dear doctors, my two-year-old son Matthew was born with crossed eyes. I recently heard that Botox could help with straightening them out. Is this true, and how does it work? And before we do talk about treatment options, let's talk about the cause of, in medicine, what's called strabismus, a.k.a. crossed eyes. Now, the eye itself has six tiny little muscles that control eye movements. And normally, when things are working appropriately, your eyes will always track together. So it sends one consolidated message to the back of your brain. That's where your visual processing center is. But when one of these muscles is either over or underactive, one eye is out of line. So when you're looking at this image here in the animation, that right eye is not turning appropriately. So it sends two separate signals to your brain. Ultimately, your brain ignores one eye. And over time, your brain will compensate and only pay attention to the image from one eye. That leads to permanent vision problems in people who don't get this corrected. Major problem for kids. Oh, big time. This is uh, probably one of the most common pediatric eye problems, strabismus or lazy eye. Sometimes we call it that. And uh, we pay really close attention in every checkup from newborn and beyond at making sure the eyes are tracking. Because if they're not tracking and it's not corrected early, permanent vision problems. And we have a special guest to help us talk about how Botox may be a treatment option. It's pediatric ophthalmologist, Dr. David Granite. Welcome, thanks for joining us. Hi guys. So, this is a very important issue to address. How does Botox work as a treatment for strabismus? Essentially, Botox interferes with the way the nerve talks to the muscle of the eye. That's how you get rid of wrinkles, because the muscles relax. The same thing happens in the eye muscle the muscle relax. So we inject the overacting or stronger muscle to make it relax. And then the eye will move in its position in the orbit to straighten out just the way you described uh, in how eyes should work. It's been used in children, specifically in kids who have very crossed eyes. In other words, when they're born, their eyes are just so overtly crossed that it's very obvious. And Dr. Shears was right. This is a big deal for us to get early. Those kids do have an option of using Botox, and there's a small percent of doctors in the United States who choose that as a first option that can be used. The amount of Botox we use is tiny compared to what's used for wrinkles. And Dr. Granite, we know that in wrinkles, Botox, it's going to last anywhere from three to six months, pretty much the same thing if you're treating the eye muscles? Yeah, that's exactly right on. What you're trying to do, and that's different than wrinkles, is you're trying to stretch the muscle out. Because we have paired muscles, as Dr. Stork explained, when one muscle is weakened, it pulls to the other side and stretches it out so that you can get a permanent change in the muscle alignment, which is a little bit different than what you get for wrinkles. And who's the ideal candidate for getting Botox instead of surgery? Yeah, well, sometimes the little kids that we talked about uh, who are very, very young are candidates. Some people have had other eye surgery, like retinal detachments and have scarring around the eyes. There are people who have thyroid disease that we've used it for, nerve palsies it can be used for. These are all very special circumstances. In general, eye muscle surgery still is the overwhelming way to approach kids and adults who have strabismus. But like a good carpenter, the more tools you have, the better you can treat the exact person you have in front of you with precision. Dr. Granite, thank you so much for explaining that to us today. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.